So this is part example, part lesson about half-life, and we're gonna use differential equations with this. So I have the following example, and this is a really standard half-life example, so we'll come back to this in a second. So the first thing I'm gonna do in this is I'm gonna give you a little bit of a lesson on half-life and explain kind of everything with that, and then we'll come back to this example here. Okay, so some atoms are unstable and emit mass spontaneously, and so this is called radioactive decay. And when an element goes through this process, we call it radioactive. Now, the decay of a radioactive element is described by this differential equation, and I just wanna make sure you have some intuitive understanding of this. So Y stands for the mass of the element, and T stands for time. So this dy dt equals negative ky, so this is really talking about the rate of what? This is talking about the rate at which the mass decays over time. That, so you always wanna to try to like interpret these types of derivatives. You, you wanna start kind of interpreting what do these actually mean. So this is saying that this is proportional. So the, the rate at which um, the mass decays over time is kind of relative or proportional to its mass. That's what this is getting at. Now, half-life is the amount of time it takes for a radioactive element to decay to half its mass. And so from this differential equation that we have, we get this kind of surprising result that half-life equals the natural log of two divided by K. And so one thing that I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you why this is true. This seems like such a, a random thing, right? That the natural log of two. So just kind of keep this fact in the back of your mind because we're gonna come back to it later in a sneaky way. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do now is I wanna talk about what is the solution to this differential equation. So starting here, I just want you to notice this is actually a separable differential equation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the, the dy and the y together. So first things first, we divide by the y. So now I've got this expression here, so one over y dy dt, and then I wanna bring this dt, I wanna bring it over to the other side, so you can kind of think of it like, like this. And so what I get is this expression here. And so once you separate everything with separable differential equations, then you can integrate. And if I integrate this, so I get the natural log of y equals negative kt plus c. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for y. So focusing in on this for a moment. So the only way you can really solve this to solve for y is that you've gotta just use the definition of a logarithm. So I just rewrite this now using that definition. So I, I get this expression here. And I wanna focus on this e to the negative kt plus c. So I wanna actually break up these exponents using exponent rules. So I'm gonna break this expression up now into e to the negative kt and e to the c. And the reason I'm doing that is that I can focus on this e to the c. Because remember, c just stands for a constant, right? And E is a number, so this, this ultimately, this whole thing right here is just a constant. So what we're gonna do is we're going to rename it. Instead of calling it E to the C, we're gonna call it Y sub zero or Y naught. And so now I can rewrite this expression. So notice now I've replaced my E to the C with this Y naught. So here's, here is my expression here. And so this is actually the solution to the differential equation. So we've, we've come up with that kind of general solution. Okay, so this y naught now actually stands for the initial amount of nuclei or whatever your initial mass is. This is the initial amount present. T stands for time. And then that y there, that stands for, you know, after some amount of time, how much mass or nuclei are, are left. So there's kind of what the expression means. So now I wanna take us into this example here. So the half-life of the plutonium isotope is 24,360 years. If 15 grams of plutonium is released into the atmosphere by a nuclear accident, how many years will it take for 75% of the isotope to decay? Okay, so this is where we need that solution that we just came up with. So we're going to use this thing that we just found. And so first things first, so dealing with this 15 grams of plutonium, so that's, talking about an initial quantity. So I can plug that just right into my model. So I know that's, that's where that goes. And then the other thing I wanna take into account here is this, this half-life. So the half-life of the plutonium isotope is 24,360 years. Okay, so let's think about this. So half-life like, half means the amount of time it takes 
for this initial quantity to reduce by half. So if we think about half the amount of our initial quantity, I take 0.5 times 15, that's 7.5. So now taking this half amount plus the amount of time it took, I can plug that into this equation here. So now I've plugged my 7.5 in here and then those, those years, so I plug that in for time. Okay, so now that I have all this in here, what this is going to allow me to do is to solve for k. So we're, this, is all, this is all going somewhere, so like we have to solve for k first to finish the model. So starting with this situation here, so I just want to notice what happens when I divide both sides by 15. So I get 1 half. So I'm actually going to leave this as a fraction instead of a decimal, and you'll see why in a second. Okay, so before we go farther, I, I want to make a note here. So this problem had quantities, so 15, and then we, we figured out this 7.5. But a lot of problems actually don't give you these numbers. They just talk about half-life. And they won't give you any other specifics. And it's because the actual quantities don't really matter. And I just want to take a, a brief second to show you why. So let's say they don't tell you what the actual quantity is. So you have to leave your initial quantity as this y naught. Well, think about it. It doesn't really matter what this quantity is. You know how to get to half this amount. You would take half of y naught. So this is so these are the quantities that you would plug in if you weren't given actual numbers. And so then if you divide both sides by y naught, so just think about what happens. As I as I cross those out, what am I left with? One half equals e to the negative kt. This is literally the same as what we had up here. I just have more specifics. So you're so like what I'm trying to say here is like this result, the fact that this is one half, just like this was one half. This this is always going to work like this. This is kind of like a property of of half life. Okay, so anyways, back back to this problem now. So to solve for k, so now I'm going to take the natural log of each side, and then I can use properties of logarithms to bring down this exponent here. So I bring that down. And then just a couple of things to realize now at, at this phase of the problem. So the natural log of e just equals 1. And then this part here, we're going to use properties of logarithms to break this up. So I want you to notice what happens to the natural log of 1 over 2. I break this up into the natural log of 1 minus the natural log of 2. And then, of course, the natural log of e, we, we just drop that. And the other thing to notice here, so the natural log of 1 just equals 0 which means now I can simplify this whole thing to look like this. So the natural log of negative natural log of 2 equals negative 24,360k. And so now if I actually solve this for k, so I get the natural log of 2 equals 24,300 uh, over 24,360. Now, can we talk about this? Doesn't this feel like something I was just talking about. <laughs> All right, so I, I want to think about this for a second and I want to remind you of remember that fact I told you about half-life? Like a shortcut for half-life is that it's equal to the natural log of 2 over k. And that natural log of 2 seemed really odd at the time, but now we've we've got it in this problem. So remember, in in this side of our solution, so this 24,360, this actually was the half-life. So if I rearrange this, so let's say I multiply this 24,360 to this side, and now I solve this for half-life, i.e. I divide by k. So notice what happens. I get natural log of 2 over k, same result over here. So I literally now just have that half-life equals natural log of 2 over k. So I've actually proven this little fact. And so now they're, they're one and the same. And so actually, this property here, when you first hear it, it, it might not seem like, you know, any, anything like, okay, whatever, but actually you get these two properties. So you have the property that half-life is the natural log of 2 over k, and you get that k is equal to the natural log of 2 divided by half-life. So you can actually save some time if you remember this. Now, I will tell you, I have the memory of a hamster, so I probably would not be able to remember this. I would be able to just go through the differential equation. So if you do or don't remember this, that's, that's totally fine. Um, you can always just go the, the straight up just differential equation and properties of logarithms and all that stuff. But just, just pointing it out because it's kind of cool. So now what I want to do is I want to go back to our example here. And so 
we were working through this whole equation here and now we've solved it, right? So we've taken this and now we've turned it into this. Here's our K that we solved for. And so I just want to point out now where we are in the problem. So we used this 15 grams of plutonium. We've used that. And we've used this half-life of plutonium is 24,360 years. But we haven't used everything in the problem. So when you're working through word problems, usually you have to like isolate like a part of the problem, work that out. And then you have to go back and reread the problem and ask yourself, have I actually done everything? So the part that we haven't done yet or we haven't worked with is how many years will it take for 75% of the isotope to decay? So now we have to think about what is 75% of that isotope. So 75% of the 15 grams comes out to 11.25. So I want to know, um, so if 11.25 grams it has decayed, how many grams are we left with? So I take the 15 minus the 11.25, that's 3.75 grams. Now alternatively, what you could do is you could take 0.25 times 15. This is much faster in my opinion. But anyway, however you figure out how much of the isotope is actually left, um, now you're going to plug this in. So we want to know how much time does it get to, to for us to get to 3.75 grams left. So as you can see now, we, we really have to just solve for t. So let's go ahead and just blow this equation out. So notice if I divide both sides by 15, so I just want you to notice what happens. So very similar to what happened with half-life, right? So now I wanted to know how, how long will it take to be left with 25%. So it, I don't really need to know the quantities, right? I could really just go to how much I want left over if I know that percentage. So I really just wanted you to kind of appreciate that this is the result that we, we have. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the natural log of each side and then we're going to use the same properties of logarithms again. So this is going to leave me with the, the natural log of E. We already know that falls out. So if I just isolate this, um, this exponent here, I'm left with this equation. And so then I can really solve this for T. So I multiply both sides by the 24,360 and divide by the natural log of two. So if I, if I go through all that, here's what I'm left with for my T. And so now I'm going to plug this into a calculator and I get uh, 48,720. And so now you have to remember what, what does this stand for? So this actually stands for years. And so now we finally have the solution of this. And so, yeah, so that's it. So that's how you approach that. That's everything you really need to know with Half-Life. Any questions, you can always leave me a comment. Thanks for watching, guys. Consider giving this video a like or subscribing to my channel. That really helps me out. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys next time.